What's up guys, it's your girl T here at last with my final review of the Cut Fitness Guide by Natasha Ocean. You may or may not have seen my halfway point review. This is a 10 week program and I did do a review when I had completed five or so weeks of the program. I believe I was somewhere in the midst of the sixth week when I did that video. So if you would like to check that video out, it is linked right here. I will try not to reiterate too many of the points that I made in this video so that it doesn't become too redundant. So let's jump right in. Cut, I believe came out in April of this year, if I remember correctly. The theory behind this program or the goal of it is to help you to burn more more fat so that ultimately you can eat more food. If you've ever seen Natasha's channel, and if you haven't, I recommend it highly. Uh, one of you guys actually recommended her to me. It will of course be linked in the description box along with the link to the program itself. A big part of her ethos and just approach toward fitness and food is to basically just enjoy yourself. You should be eating foods that you enjoy and that also nourish your body with the odd bit of things that maybe aren't so nourishing thrown in there, here and there, if you want them. And you should also be training in a way that makes you feel fulfilled and happy and is therefore sustainable for you. Cut is labeled as a training and nutrition guide, so there is a nutritional element to Cut, but I will talk about that more as we go on. The basics, Cut is a 10 week program that targets fat loss, and it does so by giving you five days per week of scheduled workouts, which you can use however you like. There's also a six day, which is rest or active recovery, and then the seventh day would be a full on rest day. The five workout types for each week are plyometric, lower body, upper body and hit. Then you get that active recovery or full rest day if you like, then a full body day and then a hit day. So that's roughly how the week goes. But in my experience, I was able to do the entire program much more quickly than in 10 weeks because I would often around the halfway mark combine the sixth hit day with the total body day and then I would generally only take one day off per week. So that right there allowed me to get basically the entire week's work done in about four days. Would I recommend that? No, I'm quite beat up right now and I'm having to take more rest days now than I like before I gear up to do my next program, but um, I also had to take a full eight day rest at one point during cut as well as a four day rest because of an old knee injury. Regardless, the point is you can really use this program however you would like to. That's just the way that it's presented. I'm going to structure this the same way I've structured the other reviews in my She Tried It series. So I'm going to start off with my pros and then my cons, and then I will get into just miscellaneous thoughts at the end. To rehash the pros without reiterating too much of the things I said in my halfway point review, I love this program because I love training this way. I love demanding workouts. I love these kinds of creative movements that aren't try hard. I love getting sore even. I know a lot of trainers will roll their eyes at that, but I just, I feel good when I get like nicely sore from a work and I feel like I did something. I love that there are video demos for all the movements. I do wish some of them also had a written description, just a line or two kind of explaining it because even certain movements you could see how it's done but not really understand what the prime mover is necessarily. So every once in a while that would come up. The biggest pro is how I feel after being done with this program. I mean, I know that before and after pictures are a big thing, especially now in the age of Instagram and social media. But even aside from those, just the way I feel in my own body is great. And I think that has a lot to do, not just with the program, but with just personal growth and development on my own. As a completionist, I felt very accomplished to complete this program and very, very happy to have done it. I really loved this training style. That was what attracted me to Natasha's channel in the first place and what made me interested in trying out any of her programs. So I definitely suggest that you give her channel a look because she generally does include footage of herself working out in the gym in her various videos. And honestly, for me as a viewer, seeing the types of movements that she does, not only is it the way I like to train, but it's also kind of next level of where I want to take my training. So I found that very inspirational and that was a very big selling point for me. And now that I've completed the program, I really feel excited for the next phase of my training. But because we are in a very superficial age these days, I think that before and after pictures are probably necessary if I'm going to be doing a review video. Unfortunately, my phone recently died and I don't think I ever even took a proper before before picture, but I did manage to find a picture I took of myself, just kind of a physique update I took on July 4th that I had put on my Instagram stories. That was after I'd done maybe a week or two of the program at that 
point. And then here you can see how I was looking a couple days ago. I know for a fact that my weight will always fluctuate. I think that's true about not just women, but most people, our weights can fluctuate over the course of a day or of a week or of a month. Various lifestyle considerations can cause my weight to fluctuate a couple pounds here and there, but I do feel that I am much more in control of that. I think because Cut has me feeling so much more enthusiastic about my training and what I'm going to do next, I feel like things are much more in control and I also haven't been terribly restrictive whilst doing this program. I have more or less eaten a paleo-ish type of diet, varying levels of strictness over the years. But in the past couple of months, I've been reincorporating more carbohydrates into my diet. So while the after picture of, you know, my little before and after for this program is a pretty decent change, I think, I've certainly been more defined in this in my abdomen and my upper body because that is where I get defined the quickest and easiest. But more carbs also means more watery tension and I know that I'm looking a little bit softer than I have based on my diet in the past in my life but I'm also at a place where I don't care. I feel pretty good about myself and I feel even better when I get to have the occasional sandwich or slice of pizza. You access the actual training portion of Cut through an app called Athlete. I talked pretty well at length about Athlete in my previous video, but I'll touch on it again. It's a pretty cool interface when it works. It allows you to tick off each exercise as you're going through the workouts. It's very user friendly. You can see how many reps of each thing you have to do. There are video demos for every exercise. Some moves have progressions some some do not some there probably isn't really a progression that would make sense to just kind of have to do those as written but in general I think it is definitely a high value way of presenting the guide rather than just giving someone a PDF along with the actual workout guide through athlete there is a PDF that you get that has more information on the nutrition aspect and how to actually use the fitness guide. Natasha worked with Renee McGregor on Cut, who is a dietitian. So what it actually says on the front page, I believe, of the PDF is that it's approved by Renee. As the PDF goes on, it's about 44 pages or so, if I remember correctly, and she'll explain what macros are versus what micros are. She gives you a ballpark of how much protein you should eat based on your body weight. She briefly touches on supplementation, but Natasha herself doesn't take any supplements. So again, that part isn't too extensive. She also touches on how to track your food if you like or log your food using, you know, my fitness pal one of those. But it is lightly discouraged. I think the entire point of this program is to get people to be able to eat and uh, exercise a little bit more intuitively. Some of you will already know that even prior to starting this program, my goal has been to, a to be able to eat completely intuitively. I really cannot be bothered with the tedium of tracking. I just want to be able to eat and maintain my weight and feel happy, and it really shouldn't be that hard, but that is the reality of the way the world is with agriculture and factory farming, not to mention the availability of low quality, low cost, highly addictive food. Foods, but that is another conversation for another day, I digress. The general spirit of cut is just that it's very anti-restriction. You should be able to eat the foods you want within reason, of course, and still progress in your fat loss goals. And I love that, I think that's a great approach. Although for many of us, a very lofty goal and one that could take weeks, months, and possibly even years to actually achieve. Focusing on the scale for your wins is also very discouraged, which I agree with. I don't really weigh myself. I got weighed at the doctor actually, um, just a couple days ago, I had my annual checkup. I'm not big on weighing myself either. I go by how my clothes fit and just how I'm feeling because I can look in the mirror and be pretty honest with myself most of the time. And it also helps when you make videos for YouTube. You know, you can see yourself, it's kind of plain as day. Stepping on the scale, there's just so many ways it could go that don't necessarily reflect how you're doing. So I agree that don't focus on the scale. The PDF that accompanies Cut also explains that the whole idea behind the program is that you're focusing on increasing your total daily energy expenditure, your TDEE. Initially, you're doing this by increasing your physical activity by doing the workouts of Cut. And then over time, if you increase your lean muscle mass, you'll increase your TDEE, not just in the gym, but when you're doing the other activities of your day and even at rest because muscle burns more calories 
per minute, per hour, however you want to measure it, than fat does. The PDF then goes into whether you should increase, lower, or maintain your caloric consumption. As with everything else, this information is fairly general. It's not really super detailed. The key takeaway seems to be that you have to kind of monitor yourself and listen to yourself. There is no actual nutrition guide in the guide. In other words, I, there's no meal plan per se. You do get a sample day's menu of what Natasha would eat at a 2000 calorie roughly kind of day, but that's just one day. So I was a bit surprised to see that the nutrition guide wasn't, you know, a meal plan or a meal template that you could adjust yourself or anything. It really is more just kind of generally thinking about, oh, if I'm feeling tired, I should increase my calories for this portion of the program. If I'm feeling pretty good, maybe I'll keep my calories the same during that portion of the program, stuff like that. It's not really drilled down super specific. Considering she did consult with Renee McGregor, I'm not too sure exactly what that was. I, I guess Renee was just sort of approving the general guidelines that Natasha gives, but I don't really know how much of a nutrition guide you really get. It's more just kind of general rules of thumb. I think that's important to point out because it is labeled as a training and nutrition guide. And while there is nutritional information in there, when I hear nutrition guide, I think I was ex expecting something a bit more extensive dietarily. Following the nutrition explainer portion of the guide, there are references, which I appreciate. I haven't actually checked into any of them because there's a good three, four pages of references, but it is nice to see that Natasha includes that. And here's something that I thought was a little confusing and that actually made me completely not realize that this was there. There is a portion of the guide following the references that explains how best to use the actual training guide, the workouts. The first time I was reading the guide, I might've been on my phone or my tablet. And once I saw references, I assumed that was the end of the guide and it is not. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do decide to purchase cut because there's more. In the training portion of the PDF guide where she's basically explaining more about how to use the actual workouts and so forth. She also gives rules of thumb for how long you should rest between sets. She goes into things like how heavy your lift should be, which is really based more on feeling. She says things like you want to feel like you could only do one or two more reps if it's in this rep range, but if it's in that rep range, you want to basically go to failure, things like that. But it's not terribly specific. As I mentioned in my first video, there isn't really any indication of, oh, if you're at your one rep max, you want to go to this percentage. At least if it's in there, I didn't see it, or maybe I'm just forgetting, but that kind of harkens back to something I said in my halfway point review video, which was that uh, I would have personally loved to see if you know your one rep maxes, which I suppose a lot of people don't, and maybe that's why you wouldn't necessarily want to go this route. But for me, it would have been really cool to see, oh, okay, for this set of Bulgarian split squats, we want to be at 80% of our one rep max or whatever, or something like that, rather than just the general, oh, you want to feel like you're almost at failure on the last rep, because that's not necessarily as concrete for me. It's, it's more conceptual, but I think that's very much in line with the general attitude of this program. It's very much like feeling things out for yourself rather than getting a specific prescription for what you're supposed to lift or what you're supposed to eat. And I think that's important for people to know. There is also a section in the accompanying PDF where Natasha addresses injuries, how to deal with them. Usually the answer is rest and or seeing a specialist, as well as ideas for modifying movements if you are working around an injury. Last but not least, she also gives suggestions for how you might be able to adapt the guide or some of the workouts from the guide for long-term use slash long-term fat loss. She explains how you can build your own program and even how you can build your own specific workouts. So I think that's all really, really cool, really good food for thought as someone who has completed the program, you know, it's a question of, oh, do I just want to go back to the beginning and start all over again next time I want to revisit this? Or do I want to kind of cherry pick the things that I like or the days that I like and things like that? Another pro is the superficial benefits that I have experienced from doing this program. You know, we are in a very superficial age in the age of social media. And I like the fact that my butt is looking way cuter right now. I've also noticed a reduction in the appearance of cellulite on the backs of my thighs and on my butt. It's not gone, but there does appear to be less of it, and I'm grateful. 
I should mention that I also started to do intermittent fasting around the five or six week mark of doing this program. Uh, I'm still doing it. I'm still kind of figuring it out for myself and I'll be doing another video on that later but that is a consideration to keep in mind while I haven't been restricting myself of the foods that I want to eat or anything like that um, I do eat very clean 90% of the time and I do restrict when I eat because I am using intermittent fasting to help really maximize my fat my fat burn throughout the day and when I'm at rest. More on that to come later, but that's another video. Suffice to say, my my peach is looking better than it did after I did the peach plan too, which is funny because this is not marketed as a booty program, nor is it, but I've gotten better booty gains on this program than when I did a program that was specifically for the booty. And I do like the user-friendly interface of Athlete. The problem is Athlete is a piece of shit, which I also touched on in my last video. Segwaying right into the cons. As I said before, and I'll say again, Athlete is a piece of shit. Now I did hear that there has been an update to the app. I believe Natasha and maybe even a couple other people commented that under my previous video. But after taking a look, I don't think there has been an update for Android. I think the update was only for iPhone. So I have had to continue to suffer with a completely unstable app that frequently crashed on me and lost all of my workout data. I also wish that Athlete would let you uh, change the default units in it because it, the default is kilos. I'm a United States and we're dumb and we don't use the metric system. So it would be nice to not have to change kilos to pounds every single time I'm putting something in. One con is that while there are general guidelines given for how to modify with injuries, there aren't really specifics given when you actually get into the nitty gritty of the workouts. So for a beginner, you might feel a bit lost. If you're on the wrong side of 25 like me, sometimes jumping is not in the equation for that day. I'm lucky enough to be a fairly experienced exerciser. I would say that I'm probably a more intermediate advanced exerciser. So I'm always able to come up with something else for me to do if I need to modify. If you're more of a beginner, you might struggle more and you might not be able to adapt this program for yourself in a way that still feels challenging enough. There are a lot of movements that can be hard on joints. There's a plyometrics day in every week of the program. So plyometrics is of course jump training and training for explosiveness. So if you can't do movements with impact, that's pretty much like an entire day potentially out the window for you if you're not well versed in ways to modify those types of movements. And the last con I'll touch on is that I wish there was, and this is something I said in my last video as well, a way to print out or screenshot or something a quick and dirty chart of a workout so that if you don't feel like being on your phone, you could just take that and then just kind of like have that with you because I don't know, it does get a little annoying having to wake up your phone and put in your password every time you finish a, a, a particular exercise. My workaround for that next time I do cut is to just get a little whiteboard and I'm just gonna jot down all of my movements, reps and sets that way and then lean that up against the wall wherever I'm working in the gym so that I don't have to keep go running back and unlocking my phone every 10 minutes. It just gets a little annoying. It's not a huge deal, it's just a consideration. Moving into miscellaneous thoughts, one thing that I would really uh, love to see added to athlete is a feature where you could favorite movements or even entire workouts so that you could easily revisit them or just see your list of favorites if you want to build your own workout later. For example, there's one workout in the program where you do one-legged box jumps. I think it was in week three or four. This is a movement that I can't do without modifying. I have to use handles because I will eat shit for sure. And I remember saying, I can't wait to get to week 10 because I think, you know, it's six more weeks or whatever, I'll be able to do these unassisted. Unfortunately, those one leg box jumps never came back. So I didn't really get to continue working on that movement. Now, if I go ahead and revisit cut, I definitely would want to incorporate that workout or that movement into my training more regularly. So it'd be really dope if athlete could add like a feature where you could star or bookmark movements or workouts that you love so you can find them easily later. You know, just 
Just a thought. This is the section for miscellaneous thoughts. I think it would be cool if, in addition to having that favorites or bookmarking feature, if they had a place where they could store all of your max weights for any of the movements that you've actually completed in whatever programs you have through Athlete. I don't know of how you could access it, maybe through like your settings page or like a personal data page where you could see like, this is the heaviest I've back squatted, this is the heaviest I've front squatted, this is the heaviest I've deadlifted. It would be nice to have that information just quick and dirty, easy access within the app somewhere since the data is in there. But as far as I know, the only way to actually get to it is to go into a workout that contains that movement. And I'm wondering now if when I go back to repeat cut and start over, will it wipe all of my old data from the last time I used it and will everything just go back to zero? So that's just another consideration because I don't, I honestly don't even know the answer. Next up is the fact that, you know, there isn't, like I said, a whole lot of specific guidance on nutrition uh, when it comes to this program, even though it's labeled as a fitness and nutrition guide. I do believe that that is a more long-term way to go is to teach a man to fish rather than tell a man to eat three ounces of fish. But I do also think that each of us as, as individuals have to manage our expectations to be more realistic. If you subscribe to the three somatotypes, which I believe are at least anecdotally interesting and worth entertaining, I would consider Natasha to be an obvious ectomorph, AKA a, a naturally slim, lean person. I am not. I'm a mesomorph, I believe, and it is possible to be more than one of the somatotypes and it is possible to change somatotypes throughout your life. Regardless, if I even look in the general direction of a bakery, my body fat will go up at least 3%. So while it is a goal for me to be able to eat more and eat more freely and not feel so restrictive, I don't think it's realistic for me either to ever be able to eat as much or as freely as Natasha most likely. Our metabolisms will never be set up the same. So I just don't think it's in the cards for me to be able to eat 2,500 calories on a regular, regular day. I wouldn't buy this program because you've watched one of Natasha's, you know, girl versus food 10,000 calorie challenge videos and you wanna be able to do that and look like her. It's probably not gonna happen. I've only been following her for a few months and she just seems to get leaner and leaner and leaner. She's just a little lean machine. She's so strong and athletic and inspirational. And it's definitely something that I aspire to, but I have to aspire to it in a realistic way. You definitely need a gym to do this program. Natasha has teased on her Instagram recently that she's working on a program called Home, which will be a home slash travel guide for people with minimal access to equipment and space, which should be pretty cool. But for cut, you definitely need a gym and you probably need a more traditional gym to do it exactly as written. I go to a CrossFit gym because I, I hate traditional gyms. So I definitely had to make it work with quite a lot of movements. You know, we didn't have cable machines and leg presses and a couple things here and there, you know, abductor machines. So I just had to get creative and come up with other ways to simulate those movements or just target those same muscles doing something else. So that's something you need to keep in mind. You will also need space. So even if you do have a lot of gym equipment at home like I do, I still needed the actual space to complete this program because you're doing things like long jumps and things where you will just need room to do them. When it comes to warming up for these workouts, I think that's something that is super duper important because I'm someone who has past injuries and had a past injury flare up around week four of completing this program and I'm still dealing with it. Obviously it's not the program's fault, it's my bad form probably, along with inadequate warming up. There is a suggestion in the PDF portion of the guide that says, you know, do whatever you like to warm up, which, you know, not a ton of direction there once again. In the guide, Natasha states that she does 10 minutes of dynamic stretching, which is something you can consider. For me, I would walk for several minutes, a good 10, 15 minute walk. And then um, once my knee injury flared up, I would also start doing some foam rolling and some barbell therapy as well as some glute activation because my knee issue is related to my IT band. So that's a whole thing. In any event, glute activation is meant to help me with that. Now, a lot of the movements in this program 
our lateral movements and typically because of the way our lives are we aren't moving in those planes all that often you know so many of us have desk jobs or just very sedentary lifestyles these are the types of movements that can aggravate or cause injuries for a lot of us if we're not adequately warmed up or if our form is off I'm pretty convinced that some of these lateral movements are what aggravated my IT band I'm not going to get into the IT band and how it works and everything but it's just something uh, that I wanted to point out because I think it would be really cool to see more from Natasha on how she stays injury free, more in depth on what kind of stuff she does in her warm up to like, maybe show us some of the dynamic stretches that she does. None of that is in the program, but you know, 2020 hindsight, I wish it had been. It would be nice. I would love to hear from Natasha on what she recommends for warming up and injury prevention more in depth. She is a few years younger than me, so maybe it's just not really something that she struggles with just yet but you know as you get older old injuries can flare up and new injuries become more possible so I would love to get a little bit more guidance even if it were an add-on like one of her recipe guides or just a YouTube video maybe uh, if you're watching Natasha that would be I would love to see that just a little bit more information on how you warm yourself up and prepare yourself for these very demanding workouts a little bit more in depth as well as how you make sure you prevent injuries, obviously, besides having impeccable form, which you do. Next, I would say that this program is not for people who are not self-motivated. If you aren't able to really get yourself going and get your ass in gear on your own, if you need a trainer or a group class environment, this may not be the program for you. I'm a very introverted person and introverts like working out alone. So it was great for me because I mean, I could basically just kind of focus and I am very self-motivated and able to push myself. If you are that way, you will get on very well with this program. Another thing I would mention is uh, I would suggest perhaps investing in an interval timer. I know there are several apps that you can get on your phone that do that for free, but I just personally preferred having my little gym boss. I know it's old school, but I still use it. I still love it. And it's just handy because Again, like I said earlier, I don't really enjoy fumbling with my phone when I'm trying to get through my workout. So I loved just having that handy because there's a lot of HIIT training and things like that where you will need to keep time for how long you're doing movements and how long your rests are and things like that. Anyway, I have rolled like three or four times on my camera. So I'm going to stop here because I feel like I am, this video is already too long and I've at least covered the broad strokes between this and my, my first review, my halfway point review. The fact of the matter is I loved Cut. I feel like I haven't enjoyed my training this much in years. And not only did I enjoy doing this program, but it has me very excited to continue progressing in my training and in my fitness. I mentioned in my previous video that I also have purchased Move. I have not done it yet. Move is her 12 week program, which is much more in line with how Natasha actually trains herself. And I will absolutely be doing Move soon. I don't know if I'm going to do it right away. I'm gonna kind of enjoy just programming myself for a week or two, maybe three weeks, just kind of doing a little bit more of a free style type of thing and try to hopefully heal up some uh, aches and pains that I've got going right now. But that is where we are at. If you were asking if I would recommend cut, my answer remains the same as it was for my halfway point review. And that is yes. Yes, I recommend it highly. I loved it. So thank you to Natasha for making this program because I enjoyed it so much. And I think it's actually a great value for money, especially compared to some of the crap these other Instagrammers and YouTubers are trying to sell for similar or higher price points. I feel like this is leaps and bounds worth every penny, at least it was for me. I'm sure there's things I'm leaving out which is going to really upset me when I'm editing, but I'm gonna have to end it here because this video is gonna be just way too long if I keep going. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully between my first review and this one, you at least have a good idea of whether you would like to invest in cut. I recommend it if you do. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. That's a, that's a nappy-headed hose there, I'm going to take that down. <laughs>